Hello students, welcome to class one of your module five. In this last module, we are going to deal about input and interaction, curves and animations. Here, this complete module talks about the various kinds of input devices. With the help of this input devices, how we can interact with our computer system or we call it as a graphic system and how we can change the orientation, shape and size of the, the object that we have drawn with the help of some, uh, with the help of the previous model that whatever you have studied. So apart from that, we are going to talk about uh, various kinds of uh, the different, different uh, shapes of the object that is nothing but curves and uh, with the on that curves we can apply some kind of animation so that we can give a kind of uh, uh, liveness to that particular object so that they can move okay so a kind of animation kind of effect that we can see okay so as usual these are the two prescribed textbook from your video site so in the portion that we need to cover okay uh, so as i said input and interaction so many input devices then some display list and display list modeling and uh, programming event driven inputs that is the matter menus okay uh, picking all these operations will come under this uh, programming event uh, driven input then some of the logical operations okay that is a uh, or operation xor operation and operation then curved surfaces in that uh, we are going to see quadric surfaces and with respect to quadric surfaces we are going to see its open gel commands and uh, cubic surfaces and its open gel functions and finally we are going to use a very important uh, spline curve that is a bezier spline curve okay with respect to that curve we are going to plot the surfaces okay and uh, with respect to that open gel functions we are going to see so you can see that uh, the almost 70 percent of the the portion of all this uh, module 5 is covered from textbook 2 and remaining 30 percent of the portion is covered from textbook 1 okay so these are the chapter number 3 and chapter these are the chapter number 3 okay that belongs to test book 2 and chapter 8 and chapter 13 belongs to test book 1. So let us see this input and interaction. Okay. So computer technology was enabling users to interact with the computer displays, right? Because whenever we create any image, okay, it will keep on displaying that image. Okay, but we, whenever we want to change, okay, its size, its shape, its orientation, at that time, we are unable to do the changes. Okay, because we have written the program like that, because it is, it will keep on displaying the, the same content, okay, whatever we have mentioned in the program. But whenever we introduce a kind of interaction to that program, okay, that is the thing, but the program is going to ask some input from the user, okay so with the help of that input now in the program we can make a kind of code so that we can we can change the shape size and orientation of the the particular output so with respect to that we have to include some kind of interaction to that uh, output so ivan sutherland's sketchpad project launched the present era of interactive computer graphics Nowadays, everyone is using this uh, uh, touch screen mobile. Okay, few years back, if you see uh, this particular some models like Samsung, okay, in that uh, Samsung Note, uh, there you will get a kind of stylus pen. So, with the help of that pen, okay, so whenever you whenever you place that point, that pen tip on the screen, uh, on the mobile screen. Okay, so it is going to get activated with the, some signals. It is going to trigger to that display and some kind of uh, 
the changes is going to happen in the screen okay so nowadays uh, it is very rare to see such kind of stylus pens because nowadays everyone is using their uh, fingertip okay so whenever you are pressing on your uh, mobile screen okay so whenever you want to open whenever you open up uh, any kind of any uh, application so just when you touch your fingertip on that uh, that icon uh, that application icon it is going to pop up okay so such kind of interaction okay is initially it was given the it is given the idea by uh, means its idea is given by this ivan sutherland okay i hope for many time i i hope you can see that many times we are talking about sutherland sutherland because sutherland is nothing but he is the father of computer graphics so user sees an image on the display he reacts to this image by means of interactive devices such as mouse right so whenever you are using any system okay you can uh, interact with the system with the help of mouse right without a mouse how you can open up how you are going to close okay any windows okay how you are going to shut down the pc okay yes you can go for the keyboard okay but the keyboard interaction is not that much smooth as compared to the, the usage of mouse the image changes in response to his input he reacts to this change and so on right so whenever you change the mouse cursor okay so you are taking the mouse cursor from here to here okay here to there okay and by using this mouse cursor you are minimizing maximizing closing okay so whatever the changes that you want to bring in your screen okay you can bring it so based upon that triggering okay the system is keep on changing its state so here normally we are going to see with respect to open gl we always use a library called glut okay this a graphics library utility toolkit always provides a minimal functionality that is expected on virtually all the system such as opening the window closing the window minimizing the window and with the help and use of a keyboard and mouse and creation of pop up menus okay so creation of a pop up menus is nothing but uh, in typically in the windows operating system normally you want to refresh okay if you want to refresh the system what you are going to do you are going to press the right button okay right mouse button okay so it is going to pop up the window then in that you are going to see the item that is a uh, refresh so you are going to click that refresh okay so a kind of such kind of pop up menus that we also can be designed okay and uh, with the help of this uh, graphics library utility, utility toolkit and in this toolkit we can use uh, some input devices like keyboard and mouse okay that we already study okay so i hope you can recall the callback function for a keyboard that is a glut keyboard func and similarly for the mouse that is a glut mouse func okay so all these libraries okay all this uh, prototype of that particular commands will always comes into this uh, glut toolkit the next one input devices okay so we can think about input devices in a two distinct ways one is the physical devices and another one is logical devices so the best example for the physical devices are keyboard and mouse or you can include the joystick okay hand gloves okay all these things will come under physical devices these are the devices which are tangible in nature okay you can touch them you can feel them you can see them okay by your naked eye so such type of devices we called as a physical devices the next one is logical devices this logical devices is characterized by its high level interface with application program rather than by its physical characteristics means this logical devices are intangible in nature okay you can't see them you can't feel them but you can feel the presence of them okay so here it is characterized by the high level interface means a kind of apis okay a kind of high level interface a kind of interface okay that is going to bound that it is going to bind between the the user okay and the the application program so if you take some example okay if you take the example of your c or c++ c sharp java whatever okay uh, example for here is a c code okay you are using the index 
then next you are using printf enter the value of x scan f okay percentage d and percent x printf the value of x is percentage d x okay so in this particular program you can see that this is nothing but variable okay and this printf function it is says that it wants some value from the user okay so it is going to display that message okay on the console enter the value of x okay after that you can see the mouse cursor or the, the particular cursor is keep on blinking which indicates that it is waiting for the user input okay so once you give the input okay and once you press the enter it is going to take that input okay and it is going to store in in this particular variable okay that is x okay and next it is going to print the statement and it is going to display that value that you are mentioned to it okay so here whenever you see this uh, printf okay whenever you give the whenever it gives that okay enter the value of x okay so next it is keep on uh, it is keep on thinking that cursor and it is waiting for the user input okay assume that you are not at all given the input okay but still it is keep on blinking that cursor okay assume that you kept the system as it is okay and you come after one year okay if you come after one year okay you can see that it is it is it will be there in that same state only means it is not at all it is not at all moved to any state it is keep on asking the it is keep on asking give me the input okay once you give the input okay once you press the enter then only it is going to process okay i hope in your uh, uh, the subject called uh, um, fafl or uh, toc that is a uh, machines that is a turing machine okay mori machine mili machine then uh, uh, finite automatas okay there you have seen right that is a transition from one state to another state okay so that that type of things can be seen over here okay obviously the complete computer system is depends on this uh, uh toc theory of computation concepts okay similarly you can use some other functions like uh, get character put character get ch okay put ch okay and uh, with respect to c++ you can go for c in c out for the java you can use this uh, system dot out dot print ln for c sharp you can use console dot uh, write line read line okay these are all the kind of a uh, kind of logical input input devices so with respect to this uh, physical input devices again we have two types that is pointing devices and keyboard devices yes these are very uh, understandable concept okay because it is very easy to because many times you have seen these things you have understood these things okay pointing devices are nothing but these are the physical devices that allows the user to indicate the position on the display and almost incorporates one or more buttons to allow the user to send the signals or interrupt to the computer okay so pointing devices are the devices which always gives the position on your display with the help of mouse cursor okay and it is going to give you a uh, one or more buttons that is a left right and middle button sometimes you can see the see the scroller also with the help of these buttons okay so by pressing these buttons okay or releasing the buttons okay you can change the status of your computer the next one is a uh, keyboard devices is almost always a physical keyboard but can be generalized to include any device that returns the character codes okay so you are pressing the keys okay so that is something but the physically you are pressing the keys okay so that once you press the key that it is going to give the signal okay to the system and whatever the button or whatever the key that you have pressed okay its appropriate ascii value will be sent to the system okay and system is going to perform the remaining task mouse trackball are similar in use and often in construction as well okay so this is your uh, typical mouse okay normally we can see okay and this is the trackball okay so as they say that uh, the construction wise both are same okay okay 
So let us see that, okay. With respect to this mouse, when turned over, a typical mechanical mouse looks like trackball, okay. So when you compare this uh, trackball and this uh, mouse, but in our mind, we should keep, we should keep uh, it as a, it is a mechanical mouse, okay. Nowadays, it is very difficult to see the mechanical mouse everywhere. You can see these optical mouses, okay. So in the few, uh, whenever you turn over, whenever you turn over this uh, mechanical mouse, at the bottom, you can see a kind of uh, a small ball will be there, okay. So in both device ball will be there okay that is in the bottom okay so same kind of uh, that ball will be kept on this uh, on this track ball okay so here it is under and it is on that uh, means about to that uh, uh, track ball in both devices the motion of the ball is converted into signals sent back to the computer by pairs of encoders inside the device that are turned by the motion of the ball means whenever you are going to change okay the mouse position okay whenever you change this mouse position or whenever you keep your finger okay uh, finger on this mouse on this uh, ball and whenever you change okay whenever you change its location okay that will be that mechanical energy okay mechanical energy will be get converted into electrical energy and that will be sent to the computer by pairs of encoders. So by pairs of encoders means it is the integration of X direction, integration of Y direction. Okay. So together this integration of X and integration of Y is combined and it is going to give the appropriate location with respect to X, Y axis. Okay. So the encoders measure motion of in two orthogonal direction. Two orthogonal direction means okay this both the directions are orthogonal to each other means this is the x and this is the y and the angle between this x and y is 90 degree there are many variants of these devices some uses the optical detectors rather than mechanic mechanical detectors to measure motion as i said nowadays we are not we are not seeing this mechanical mouses okay we can see the optical mouses why we have adapted to the optical mouses because optical mouses are relied on or they are worked on the principle of light okay so who is having the frequency around some 2.4 gigahertz okay so hence they are quite faster as compared to the mechanical mouse and problem with the mechanical mouse is uh, with respect to this uh, atmospheric uh, variations that is thing but uh, moisture is there or any particles comes within this uh, within in this uh, mouse uh, that ball Okay, so this mechanical mouse won't give the appropriate, uh, will not give the appropriate uh, what position, okay, on our screen. So hence, uh, it is better to, it is it, that is why nowadays most of our most of us we are using the optical mouse. There are also various pressure sensitive devices used in keyboards that perform similar functions to the mouse and trackball, but that do not move. Okay, so there are in some um, uh, in some uh, some vendors okay they will produce uh, uh, some kind of keyboards within that uh, they have some kind of a kind of a pressure sensitive devices the best example for this one is uh, our ibm thinkpad okay ibm thinkpad i hope uh, you can you have seen this ibm thinkpad laptop okay you can see that uh, in the in that laptop a keyboard side you can see the red dot will be there okay so if you're not if you're not seeing means just google it out ibm thinkpad uh, laptop okay you will get that image okay you can see that between the keyboard there will be a, a red a red button will be there okay so that red button is a pressure sensitive device okay by it, it will not move it is always fixed it is always fixed but whenever you apply the pressure on it okay based upon the applied pressure okay it is going to change the position of the cursor in the next screen okay so their encoders measure the pressure exerted on the small knob that is often located between two keys in the middle of the keyboard okay so you have to go through that image okay so then only you can understand okay because uh, it is a pressure sensitive device okay 
So uh, whatever the operation this uh, mouse, mechanical mouse and this uh, track ball is doing, the same operation can be seen in this uh, pressure sensitive devices that are located in between the keyboard keys. It is not necessary that the outputs of the mouse or trackball encoders be interpreted as a positions. Okay, so it is not necessary that uh, it always gives a position. Okay, sometimes it is it will be always used for uh, closing. Okay, maximizing, minimizing that purpose also we can be used. So instead, either the device driver or the user program can interpret the information from the encoder as two independent velocities means assume that uh, assume that you have uh, written the program okay so with the help of that program now you can identify means whenever you click okay whenever you click the uh, mouse cursor okay mouse uh, mouse cursor in the window okay it is going to retrieve the the location of that one means x and y okay for that one also we can use so means it depends upon for what purpose you are using the mouse and the keyboard. Okay, so the computer can then integrate these values to obtain the two-dimensional positions. So yes, as we change the mouse uh, position, okay, that is something but the changing is something but velocity. But uh, here you can see that the velocity is too much. Okay, that is uh, uh, velocity means uh, acceleration. Velocity means uh, when the vehicle is in high, high speed. Okay, then only we can use this velocity okay but here we are performing the small movement of the mouse okay so uh, with respect to that small movement okay we are going to get uh, the different x value and different y values okay so has move has mouse moves across the surface the integrals of the velocity yield x and y values that can be converted to indicate the position of the cursor on the screen okay so if this is the mouse, okay, with respect to x-axis it is changing, with respect to y-axis it is changing, okay, so total integration can be done so that we will come to know that what is the exact x value and what is the y value so that will be displayed on this screen. Small deviations from rest cause slow or small changes, large deviations cause the rapid or large changes, okay, so if you Whenever you change the mouse cursor, okay, with the small variation, okay, small changes in the uh, small changes in this uh, cursor position that you can observe. If you make the large movement of the mouse, you can see the large movement on the screen also, okay, of that cursor. If the ball does not rotate, then there is a no change in the integrals, and the cursor tracking the position of the mouse will not move. Okay, means the that mouse is in idle position so we are not going to change we are not going to see any changes in the mouse cursor okay so this this mode says that these devices we call it as a relative positioning devices because changes in the position of the ball is the position in the user program means this physical device that is nothing but a mouse whenever it is going to get change based upon that the mouse cursor which is the logical in nature okay it is also good good going to it is good also get going to change okay so there is a kind of relationship between this physical device and that logical device okay so whenever you move this physical device okay with respect to that this logical device also get change so such kind of positioning we call as a relative positioning device the next one data tablet okay it is not necessary for me to explain in detail about data tablets or your uh, um, your typical uh, uh, touch screen mobiles okay because everyone nowadays everyone is uh, knows about these things okay so again we have uh, two types absolute positioning and relative positioning devices relative positioning we have already seen okay the best example for relative positioning device is the mouse okay and next one for the absolute positioning is nothing but uh, either that is nothing but the stylus pen or your fingertip so whenever you keep okay whenever you keep your fingertip on the a particular location of your screen at that position okay it is going to get changed okay so it is absolute okay uh, so such kind of positioning we call as a absolute 
positioning and next one uh, yes this there is a light pen okay light pen has a said stylus pen okay was the device used by the sutherland uh, sketch pad there the light pen contains the light sensing devices such as photocell okay so it consists of some photocells okay some it is having some photo old tech nature okay so based upon the pressure based, based upon the electrical signals okay it is going to get uh, it is going to get the signals and it will be sent to the computer and computer can understand it the next one joystick okay joystick is nothing but the motion of the stick in the two orthogonal direction is encoded interpreted as a two velocities and integrated to identify the screen location i hope uh, many of you have used this uh, uh, joystick at least you have seen this joystick normally while playing the games okay we are going to use this joystick okay it is a kind of stick okay and it associated with some kind of buttons okay and with the by holding this uh, joystick okay you can uh, you can orient in uh, x axis y axis okay so which indicates that uh, you are playing the game okay uh, and you are moving the object okay of that particular game in the x axis and y axis direction so apart from that uh, the example the applications of this joystick is uh, if you are, if you want to do the flight simulator okay or helicopter simulator okay some kind of simulation if you want to perform at that time joysticks will play very important role the next one the space ball okay a space ball looks like a joystick with a ball on the end of the stick however stick does not move okay so you can see that this is the space ball okay it exactly looks like a joystick okay means that it also contains the stick but on the stick we have this ball okay and this ball does not move okay it is fixed in nature and this stick is also fixed in nature so it is a pressure sensitive device this sphere is a pressure sensitive device so here whenever you place the finger tip okay on this sphere and whenever you change your finger tip okay based upon the movement based upon the movement the the position or the uh, position of the cursor is going to get change on your display pressure sensors in the ball measure the force supplied by the user the space ball can measure not only the three direct forces okay that is up down front back left right it also it also provides the three independent twist okay three independent twist okay so this up down okay that is we call as a one degree of freedom front and back that is also one degree of freedom left and right that is also one degree of freedom and also along with that we have three other three other degree of freedoms okay so what is a degree of freedom the degree of freedom is the thing but it is the the free movement okay the free movement of the device okay so has a name, a name itself says that a freedom okay so wherever you want to go okay uh, wherever wherever you want to move okay so how many degrees it is going to give okay so that is nothing but degree of freedom okay so you can see that uh, you can come from left to right or you can go from right to left okay similarly from near to back okay and back to near up to down down to up okay so these are the movement okay and with respect to that if you want to perform some angular orientation means if you want to move from left to to right okay but if you want to move from left to to right okay with an angle okay with an angle okay that is the but roll okay so similarly okay if, if you want to go from again uh, left to right okay that is yaw okay and similarly from back to forward okay that is a thing but pitch okay so here totally we have six degree of freedoms that is up up down front back left right roll yaw and pitch okay so totally we have six degree of freedom i hope you can remember we have used the four cross four matrix right 
four cross four matrix in that this four cross four matrix will gives us 16 coefficients means four cross four means 16 16 coefficients okay but in the computer graphics terms we call them as a 16 degree of freedoms okay 16 degree of freedoms okay so you can see that for the six degree of freedoms only it is it will be it became a complex okay if you are using the 16 degree of freedom it will become more complex okay so in i want you to go through the uh, google okay and type uh, some uh, degree of freedom okay specifically you can specify the values that is a uh, six degree of freedom then go for eight degree of freedom 12 degree of freedom 16 degree of freedom okay you are going to get the images okay so you can analyze that part input devices such as nintendo's y incorporate the gyroscopic sensing of positioning and orientation okay i hope you on i hope you have heard about nintendo okay playstation okay xbox 360 okay these are the kind of uh, the gaming input devices okay that also supports the gyroscopic sensing gyroscopic means uh, uh, relating to the gravitational force okay nowadays uh, in our mobile also we have this uh, gyroscopic sensing okay that is the thing but uh, if you want to open the compass okay so first of all you have to move the you have to move the you have to move the uh, mobile in the kind of infinite direction means uh, a kind of uh, uh, infinite symbol kind of direction you have to move okay so that uh, your mobile will get adjusted to this uh, gyroscopic sensing later when you place based upon the north pole and south pole okay that a magnitude uh, attraction okay and repulsion uh, it is going to give the direction that which is the north which is the south okay and east and west the next one comes uh, logical devices okay i hope you have you have already studied I, have, I hope you already understood this logical devices so two major characteristics for the logical behavior of the input devices the first one is the measurements that device returns to the user program okay so whatever the values it got that it is going to return to the user program okay then the time when the device return those measurements how much time it is going to consume okay means uh, what is the time what how much amount of time it is going to take to return that measurements to the user program some earlier api defined six classes of logical input devices but opengl does not take this approach okay so opengl is having okay its own set of classes okay but if you see in a typical way okay in a theoretical way okay normally we have a six classes of logical input devices okay uh, because opengl will it can club some classes or it can uh, or it can uh, make the subclasses or it can uh, it can uh, segregate from each other okay anything can possible hence uh, it is not adopting that there are six classes are there okay it may be greater for it or it may be less for it it depends on the the versions of the opengl first one is a string okay string is a kind of logical device a string device is a logic device that provides the ascii strings to the user program okay its job is to give the ascii values okay ascii string values to the user program okay so this logic device is usually implemented by means of physical keyboard yes because whenever you press the keys only at that time that signal will be given to the computer and it can come to know that what key is pressed based upon the ascii value the next one is locator okay locator has name it says that it talks about location a locator device provides a position in the world coordinate to the user program okay that is the thing but in your window okay the output window whatever you're going to get okay output window means uh, not uh, that program output okay the entire output means that complete screen okay so that uh, coordinate world coordinate uh, position that can be retrieved with the help of a locator usually implemented by means of pointing devices you can go for mouse or trackball okay so it will gives the a location okay the next one is a picking okay picking operation 
the picking device returns the identifier of an object on the display to the user program okay so assume that uh, on the screen you have multiple icons okay so once you double click on that icon which indicates that you have picked that particular icon okay so it is going to return the identifier identifier means a unique id okay unique id of that particular object or that particular icon to the display to the user program okay that is what we call as a picking okay so many are there okay from there anyone you are going to pick and it is usually implemented by the pointing device that is mouse the next one is choice choice device allows the user to select one of the discrete number of options okay so multiple options are there in that if you want to choose any one any one okay so we are going to go for this choice operation okay so for this uh, choice operation is a thing but as i said this uh, uh, refresh okay this menus will come okay and in that you are going to specify any one of them okay that is a uh, uh, refresh okay or personalization so many items will be there in that menu okay you can choose any one of them that is because it's a choice okay selection of a discrete number of options in OpenGL, we can use the various widgets provided by the Windows system. The widget is a graphical interactive device provided by either the Windows system or the toolkit. The typical widgets are your menus, scroll bars, graphical buttons. Okay, these are nothing but widgets. I hope in your uh, Ubuntu, okay, you can see in the uh, left side, okay, there is a kind of widget will be there, okay. That is uh, in the column wise, okay. Column wise, some icons will be placed, okay. So that that complete that complete space, okay, we call it as a widget, okay. So with the help of that widget, whatever the the things that you want to use, you can easily uh, choose from there, okay. So menus, scroll bars, okay, graphical buttons, all these things will come under widgets. So this widget set our key element defining the graphical user interface okay and that is also uh, implemented by the that is also can be accessed by the mouse devices the next one comes to evaluators okay which will do the valuation so evaluators provides the analog input to the user program okay there are boxes or dials to provide the evaluator input okay so normally you have seen multiple times in the facebook okay or in the google okay you are going to get a kind of a boxes okay so it is going to say that okay username okay or login uh, login id the next one next one more box that is a password okay so in that you are going to type your uh, username and the password okay so that box okay and after that you are going to click on the submit okay so it is going to evaluate okay it is going to evaluate with its database the whatever the data that you have provided okay it is going to uh, compare with its so database if both are matching it is going to it is going to allow you to the enter into the website okay otherwise it will give the message that uh, you're not authorized user please try again okay so widgets uh, within the various toolkits usually provide this facility through the graphical devices such as the slide bars and radio button radio boxes also okay so i hope you have seen the radio boxes that's the thing but uh, you have gone through this uh, pst in that uh, objectives questions will be there right you are picking either a b c or d okay so you can choose any one of them okay any one of them you can't select all of them okay so whenever you select one another will be de get deactivated okay so such kind of things can be used okay so it is going to perform the evaluation which one is a correct which one is not correct and final logical uh, input device that is a stroke okay stroke has the name says it is striking okay stroking so a stroke device returns an array of locations okay it is often implemented such that an action says pushing down the mouse button start the transfer of data into a specified array and the second action is releasing the button ends this transfer okay so you, as we have already seen that uh, for this mouse uh, device it associated with the two types of state that is a down state and up state okay so with the help of this down state and up state uh, we can associate the some kind of signals okay uh, for our program means uh, 
uh, assume that I have used the down state. Okay, for the down state, whenever I press the mouse, okay, mouse button, and if the button is in the down state, okay, then only the some event should happen. Okay, some triggering should happen. Okay, so if I go for up state, okay, so whenever I release the button, whenever I release the mouse button, then only the event should occur. So such a kind of, okay, such kind of the stroking to this uh, mouse buttons, okay. So that type of input, that type of logical uh, input devices we call as a stroke. The next one, input modes, okay. What are the different modes, okay, to give the input to the computer? Input devices provide input to the application program, can be described in two entity form. One is measure process, okay, that is the the values. And next one is device trigger or trigger process, okay. So whenever you are giving the, whenever you're entering into the input mode, we have two types. One is measure process, another one is trigger process. What is a measure? Measure of the device is what the device returns to the user program, okay. So that is the thing, but for example, okay, if this is the mouse cursor, okay, I want to know what is the location of it, okay. So if you return the program and whenever you change them, whenever you execute and whenever you place this mouse cursor, it is keep on displaying the its X and Y values. Okay, that is the thing about the, the major value. Okay, that the device will return to the user program. Okay. The next one, the trigger of a device is a physical input on the device with which the user can signal the computer. Okay, it is nothing but the physical input device that is nothing but a mouse cursor by the help of that. Okay, if I go here and if I click, okay, that is a kind of triggering. Okay, so if I go here and if I press the right button, okay, a kind of triggering. Okay, so you are changing the state of the system. Okay, so the application program can obtain the measure of the device in the three distinct modes. Okay, so there is a relationship between these entities okay these two entities with the application program okay in the three distinct modes these are request mode sample mode and event mode each mode is defined by the relationship between the measure process and trigger process okay so whenever you're using this pro this modes okay yes it is the modes okay all, they already have the relationship between the measure process and trigger process along with that they are going to interact with the application program once a measure process is started the measure is taken and placed in the buffer okay so once you uh, perform the measure operation okay that will be taken and it will be placed in the buffer okay it all and it depends on the user okay whether he want that values or not the first one that is a request mode here has a name itself says that it, you are requesting okay so the measure of the device is not returned to the program until device is triggered okay so <coughs> sorry a typical c program requires the character input we use the function such as scanf okay as i've said that uh, uh, it is going to display that uh, printf enter the value and next one is a scanf okay if you give the value and if you press enter means only it is going to take that input okay otherwise it is keep on displaying the it is keep on displaying that uh, okay enter the value okay in that state only it will always remains okay so that is what the request mode here okay so here trigger process is going to give the trigger okay uh, to the measure process measure process is also always gives the measure okay and uh, and to the it is always gives the measure uh, to the program okay assume that in the program you have written okay uh, something that i want i want the scan f values okay so it is going to request okay it's going to request uh, and here whenever you um, give the value okay whenever you give the value with the help of triggering that is the by uh, pressing the mouse by pressing the key keyboard keys okay that will be triggered so it got the values, okay, and it is going to pass it to the program and computer is going to perform the, the, the task, okay, the particular task which is written in the program and it is going to display according to that, okay. So this is what we call as a request mode. 
okay whenever the program is requesting okay then only the trigger process will trigger okay hence such kind of mode we call as a request mode the next one is a sample mode okay sample mode input is a very immediate mode okay it won't wait for any work okay as soon as the function call in the user program is encountered the measure is returned hence no trigger is needed okay so it is nothing but uh, our uh, user defined functions right so whenever you are executing the program okay and the program consists of assume that uh, more than uh, uh, more than one uh, user defined functions okay for example uh, main function is there user defined function 1 2 3 4 like that okay and in the main function you are you are calling okay or if you are using the a kind of a recursive functions okay it won't wait for the user interaction okay so once the program started the execution it will keep on asking it will keep on checking the program it is going to take the values it is going to apply the values okay so it is a complete the it is complete uh, uh, interaction between the caller caller function and callee function okay so program will give the sample measure process will give the values so measure values again gives program again gives the new value okay a kind of uh, the cycle will be there between this measure process and uh, program okay but here there is no trigger okay so because no need to apply the trigger okay because they are having their own relationship okay such kind of mode we call as a sample mode or immediate mode both the request and sample modes are useful for the situations when the program guides the user but are not useful in the application where the user controls the flow of program okay so if you are using very simple kind of a triggering operation at that time okay this request mode uh, will works well okay and uh, in the sample mode okay if you already given every input to the program then program can uh, can handle by itself okay but assume that if you are using the multiple input okay if you are using the multiple input devices at that stage this request mode and sample modes does not play that much important role means they are not that much efficient okay for example you can see that a, a flight simulator or computer game game might have the multiple devices like joystick keyboard mouse okay most of which can be used at any time right so i can use the joystick i can use the keyboard mouse okay at any time i don't know that first i will use the joystick then i will go for keyboard then i will go for the mouse we can't predict okay so i can use any one of them okay or i can use all of them okay at any point of time okay so whenever i have the multiple okay input devices this request mode and sample mode does not play effectively so for that we are going to use the event mode okay so event mode can handle all those interactions okay so here an e an environment with a multiple input devices each with its own trigger and each running a measure process okay so every input devices are having their own measure values okay and they have their own triggering values so each time that device is triggered the event is generated the device measure including the identifier for the device is placed in the event queue okay so whenever you press the trigger okay so assume that okay in the program okay in the program uh, you are using the mouse function okay means mouse input devices joystick devices keyboard devices okay space ball devices okay and next one is a track ball devices okay it's relative functions you are written in your program okay so now chances are there that i can i can use any any input devices at any point of time okay i can use all of them together also okay so whenever the triggering will come okay so that triggering will give to the measure process and that measure will be given to the event queue okay so in the event queue it is going to store every events okay in a kind of first in first out order okay in a first in first out order okay so assume that first i have pressed the uh, first i have pressed the keyboard okay keyboard button so yes so first it is going to execute that keyboard event okay then next 
it is going to check any other event yes i have pressed the mouse okay so based upon the mouse okay mouse event it is going to execute okay assume that uh, uh, assume that i have pressed uh, keyboard mouse and as well as uh, joystick okay at the same time okay at the same time so at that time okay it is going to keep okay uh, it, it it depends upon uh, the particular system okay so in for which uh, object it is given the more priority okay so based upon the priority okay it is going to trigger okay that will be given to the measure okay and that will be stored in the event queue okay so assume that the keyboard is having the highest priority the next one is a mouse and the last one is joystick so the first keyboard event will be executed then the mouse and after that the uh, joystick okay uh, so in that way it is going to execute okay so the user program uh, so uh, the device measure including the identifier for the device is placed in the event queue okay so for every devices okay it is having its own identifier okay with the help of identifier it is going to come to know that which uh, uh, keyboard or which um, uh, which input devices has been used the user program can examine the front event in the queue or if the queue is empty can wait for the event to occur if there is an event in the queue the program can look at the events type and then decide what to do okay so program uh, it will give it was asking okay that i want that particular event but it will it should wait okay until and unless there should be a triggering process and that will be given to the measure and measure should give it to the event then only that event can be passed to the program okay so then only the particular program can perform the, the specific task okay with respect to that input devices so another approach is to associate the function called callback function with a specific type of event this approach is considered here due to two reasons okay i hope I, in the lab program we have used many times callback functions okay uh, this is the alternative for this uh, event queue okay uh, that is uh, we have used some callback functions like uh, glut keyboard func glut mouse func okay glut idle func glut reshape func okay these are the various kinds of callback functions okay that also we can use so why we are using for this approach okay so this approach is presently in use with a major windowing system means almost all the window systems okay don't take it in a way that a window system is a windows operating system okay uh, any operating systems okay uh, they have adopted to this approach and it has been proved to work well in the client server environment okay so in the client server environment it works well okay because uh, in the client server it can it can possible that uh, multiple clients are using the multiple input devices and whenever they give the a kind of uh, load okay a workload to the server okay server will goes down okay so server may takes more time to compute okay uh, so hence uh, this callback functions plays very important role okay has an alternative to this uh, event mode okay so this event this three modes okay this three this input mode is important for your exam perspective similarly this six logical devices also important the has um, for your examination okay so here i'm going to stop thanks for the listening